Hey, I'm Kevin with Godlike Incorporated, and I'm here with Warren Lee and Willie G. Uh, Warren is Gary Holt's regular guitar tech, and Willie is the stunt double filling in tonight. <laughs> and uh, they're taking care of him, and they're going to take you through Gary's rig and give you the details on how he gets his sounds. Guys? Excellent. Yeah, Tom Schultz has two techs. Why can't Gary Holt have two, That's right? right? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Gary's got a pretty simple rig. It's, uh, it looks like there's more going on than there really is, and Warren, of course, can fill in holes where I miss things. It's pretty simple. He's using ESP guitars right now. ESP's got a signature model coming out, loaded with uh, EMG pickups. It's basically uh, their Eclipse body shape, 24 fret neck, uh, EMG pickups with a Floyd Rose vibrato. Uh, signal goes from that into a Sure UR 4D wireless system and it's split into a whirlwind style um, selector. So we can select either the four guitars. He has three tunings he uses. Uh, so we have uh, mostly uh, D sharp, C sharp, they've got a drop B, and we've got a spare one to use. Mostly, most of the songs are in D sharp, so we keep two of those going so it's easier to bounce back and forth between them. Uh, after the Sure system, I believe it is passing the signal into this uh, Rocktron patch mate, correct? From the patch mate, we've got a few of these effects. The main one that we've got, though, is this uh, uh, pedal. Yeah, Super ST tube. Super Tube. It was ST9 Pro Plus, I think, right? That's correct. Gary really loves this pedal. He tried a bunch of the other uh, uh, ones, and he decided that uh, this one, I think maybe because of the 18-volt option, is giving him a, a more broad sound. He gets more definition. There's more headroom. And it's definitely he's getting a more of a pronounced low end. He really likes that a lot. So he has that on at all times, and it drives his heads. Right now he's using uh, a Marshall DSL 100. There's three of those that run, and this feeds all three heads. Uh, we select them all with the uh, Rocktron. The signal gets split through the JD7, so. Yeah, and it goes to feed uh, each of the three heads which are in the rack on the other side. So we also have, uh, this is kind of a volume attenuator that's used for the song Jihad. Jihad, it's for the beginning part. He plays it with his fingers and simple picks, so. And the only other thing we've got right now that is not on his pedal board is this uh, homebrew electronics machine that's uh, on that he kicks in every once in a while. He wants a little bit more sonic mayhem, it's just for more gain, a little bit more distortion. Doesn't really use it very much. This one is a TC electronic device that we have, we bring in for the song Disciple. There's a, a part where there's a strong it's a vi it's a vibrato a vibrato effect. delay effect. Yeah, from there we've got that and we've got the uh, TC Electronics, this is G major or G force, I can't remember. That one is basically just set for a single uh, uh, delay effect, uh, there's about three or four repeats on it. They use, we use it for leads and just some atmospheric things when it's, he creates like it's, uh, it's feedback loop, watches. It's in a loop with the rock trials. So. Yeah, it creates uh, feedback watches and things for in between songs for atmospheric things. From there it just goes out and into these uh, three Marshall heads. Uh, we can also select his pedal board, which is here. This is a suckable for loop. Usually he has this max on on all the time. And whenever he does leads or if he wants a bit of sustain, we just activate it uh, remotely from the front of the patch mate. And most of his other solos, he does uh, some uh, contouring with the wah. He doesn't really use it in the conventional kind of uh, Eric Clapton white room type of uh, rhythmic thing. This is more of a kind of a Michael Schenker esque thing where he uses it to shape uh, the notes. And then every once in a while also he'll kick in the flanger just for a bit of uh, more sonic mayhem. Yeah. It's the part I call the strangle hold. So also <laughs> we use this pedal as a backup for uh, the disciple for this shaker. If that doesn't if this is not working or goes out, he uses that. We okay. use this too. Okay, yeah, talk about that you know, our pro, you know, it's basically just you know, keeps everything we plug everything into there so Anywhere, if like we go to Europe or anything like that, we get okay. like just you know, so it's just like a power conditioning. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, gotcha. Okay, uh, you want to talk about his different guitars? You want to show him the guitars? Sure. This is the uh, the prototype for his signature ESP guitar. It's a uh, neck through Eclipse style. It's got the uh, more of a full access body heel sculpting. 24 fret neck Floyd Rose vibrato system. Uh, these have an EMG 89 in the neck position and an 81 in the bridge. It's just wired for two volume controls and he can do the coil split sound on the neck pickup only just by pulling up on the second one. It's wired so that the bridge uh, volume is easier access like most rock guys have. And then the neck volume is the rear and it's got the push pull pop for that. And that works out really, really well. This is the first one so far. The other ones are on their way. They'll all be similar. They may have some different uh, like finish schemes and things, but they'll all basically look like this. Right now, 
and these will probably later become B and C rig guitars. These work out really well. Uh, they've got a bunch of their uh, LTD series uh, EC1000s. These particular ones though have an 85 in the neck and an 81 in the bridge. The same thing with the uh, two volumes and it's got the tone that remains on full all the time. Um, Floyd Rose Systems. Uh, tomorrow, actually, we're going to get some things from Floyd Rose Upgrades, uh, thanks to Mr. Uh, Adam Reaver, to uh, probably put some brass uh, blocks in there. Gary really tortures the uh, system. Anyone that sees the, uh, the Slayer exit shows, you see him, he walks around, he lifts the whole guitar by the bar and just strolls around the stage to get, you know, this tortured squeals out of it. So, uh, but these hold up really, really well, so he's, he's sold on those. Right now, another thing he's brought out that ESP kindly sent is this... Uh, Richard Z, signature model guitar. Uh, Richard Z is a guitar player from Rammstein. And he likes this one a lot. This one sounds pretty similar to the other ones, but it seems to have more of an enhanced, enhanced low end. So uh, right now this is tuned to C sharp, and he uses it on songs like Disciple and some of the other Slayer songs that are more down tuned. And it just really has a, a really thick, aggressive sound. He likes that a lot. Um, I think he would prefer it if the route was uh, Rod it a little deeper. He really likes to yank the bar up there. Right now, it's set to go up two perfect steps. And that's good enough for the songs we're doing now, but he might have me take a Dremel to it a little bit later, do a little bit of customizing to uh, someone else's uh, signature model guitar. But yeah, th this one's a really nice. I actually prefer this one uh, to some of the other ones. It's got a lot of a, of a little bit chunkier neck. It's, it's really nice. I was actually surprised. Really, really good. AMG pickups in all of them. And that's pretty much it. Okay. What about the, uh, let's talk about the head. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, these are the ones that he's using now. Gary's been through uh, a variety of the Marshall heads with Slayer. With Exodus, uh, he uses uh, angle amps. They, they've got a totally different tonal thing happening. So he uses an angle and sometimes he'll fool with the, uh, a Kemper profiler as well. But with uh, Slayer for years, it, you know, he's using the tried and uh, true tested Marshalls. But in the time he's been through uh, JCM 800 heads, JCM 2000s, JVM 410s. Right now we're using these new uh, DSL 100s. We don't do the channel switching and he's got the, uh, the lead one option on. Uh, it stays there all the time. We're running the three different heads. Uh, most of the time, each head feeding two cabinets, so there's six cabinets live on stage. All the time, if we can actually fit them in the venue, which is usually, we squeeze them in with a crowbar if we have to. A little bit of Vaseline, a crowbar, some elbow grease. But yeah, they run out and uh, they're all set up pretty much the same way. They're very consistent. They all pretty much sound alike. You know, they say a lot of times each Marshall has its own identity. These all are very, very consistent, you know, from amp to amp tone wise. We also stagger the cabinets too, meaning <clears throat> this top, this head will feed cabinet one and three, this is two and four, and this is five and six, and then there's a DI running off of this. Oh yeah, there's a, uh, a radial uh, JDX DI. To blend it, you know, it's different yep. on stage left, on Carrie's side, they do they're one and four, two and five, three and six. Gotcha. So it's a different, it's for cool. blending. So. Yeah. Are anything special about the cabs? Any particular uh, no, just, speakers actually, or anything? Just the, the mode fours, the original mode four, which, which they don't make anymore. Okay. So just gotcha. with the, I think 100 watts less. Yeah. Jasper Warren. They've been around for quite a while. They've got badges on them that are say, uh, you know, made for Slayer. Yeah. Oh, okay, that. great. But yeah, and that, that's about it. You know, they're, they're very uh, consistent heads. They sound great. And uh, Gary seems to be really happy with these so far, so I don't think he's going to be uh, switching amps for a while, <laughs> which is good. Okay. So there you have it, Gary Holtz, Slayer Guitar Rig. Warren, Willie, thanks for your time. I'm Kevin from Godlike signing off. Check us out online at maxonfx.com. Go get some. Don't go on tour without it. <laughs>